I've launched over a thousand products on Amazon and I've helped students who have launched thousands more. And it's very little detail that is between a winner and a loser. And sometimes it's just how you position the product with your main image. Now I'm bringing in an expert today on how to position your product on the detail pages, on the search pages, so that your product stands out. You have to understand the psychology of the buyers that are there, the way that they're searching, the keywords they're using, and how to beat your competitors. So I'm honored to be here with Peter Paul Mann from IntelliV, who spends his days digging into the data of consumer habits. Peter, Paul, thank you so much for being here today. Um, I'm excited to dig into this because I think that what wins and what doesn't win is so important of a topic for sellers to make a winning product that we look at the data, we can win on an SEO perspective, we're great at that, but a lot of people skip that valuable step of how to position their product so that it stands out, so that it wins. Uh, and that's why I love the relationship that we have between Data Dive and IntelliV, because I think you need both to win. So uh, tell me more about some of the data you're getting, the studies, like what are the best practices around the psychology and, and winning with your main image in the search results? Yeah, well, first of all, thanks for the introduction. And we speak about those things very quite often, right? And uh, you say winning, winning. <laughs> When it comes to testing, it's not just about winning. I think this is the first thing I want to say. So indeed, I'm looking into many, many products on a daily basis. I, I have contacts with many sellers looking into certain situations, categories, etc. But it's not about winning. It's about finding a theme to sell your product and to understand the wants and needs and desires of a consumer. Know what is getting the click. Know what is needed to convert the product. So really get the sale. That, that's what you want to do. So it's not just necessarily winning because I do, if I do two options and this one is winning, so what? doesn't well, matter. All of what you said to me results in winning. Winning is the lag lagging metric. Get, yeah, winning on Amazon. Click, yeah, winning on Amazon is what I'm talking about. Yeah, that's what it's all yeah. about. And winning on Amazon, yeah. what is that, right? right? What is that? It's not. It's, so it's more sales. It's 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 a better. How price. do I make a better product? How do I make a better image that conveys a better product? So, everything everything we talk about, we're gonna have to do a more in depth study, uh, like masterclass together. But you know, let's say we've gone through the process of identifying a product that we can win in SEO. We've identified a way to improve that product with a hypothesis, and then we've come back to you to study it and, and, and talk to consumers. But, you know, let's talk about content. Let's talk about images. Let's talk about psychology of the buyers. Let's talk about that main image. How do we create that main image to really stand out, to win the click, win, winning the click? Yeah, well, the thing is that if you, so we are not talking about a certain category right now, but whatever category you have, whatever product you might want to sell, a consumer enters the marketplace, so we are talking about Amazon right now, so they type in a certain search term. They type in something. This is what they want. So they have a problem and they have a solution in mind. But we don't know, as a seller, we don't know what is it that they're actually looking for. So we all think like they're looking for a garlic press or they're looking for a coffee grinder. Well, that's true, but it's partly true. But we don't know what maybe they have certain features in mind. Maybe they have certain wants, needs, and desires. Maybe they have certain objections, like things that they already discovered from someone else or used the product before, whatever. So what is it? Like, what is it that they are actually looking for? What is the decision driver for them to give that click? And you need to know that. That's so important. If you don't know, you, you are not, you're just looking at the options on the marketplace and just copy what you see or think like, let's add this or add that. It's not about just adding features. It's about understanding what people are looking for. And that's going to be different, but depending on the different keywords they search, right? Exactly. As, exactly. So this is, this is the, the theory of buyer intent. And buyer intent is different on different places on the internet. So if I'm just browsing on my Facebook feed or my TikTok wall, my buyer intent is very low. It's an interrupting type of ad. If I'm on Google, generally my buyer intent is, is a little bit higher, but not quite as high because I'm just looking for maybe I'm researching or I'm how to or the best kind of. If I'm on Amazon, my buyer intent is typically much higher, but even there, there are keywords where people are not sure what they want. 
So how do you break that down? What is the science behind well, that? So for instance, let, let's say, so I, I like to work on my car. This is my hobby. It's also nice to talk about hobbies. Why not? Right. So I like to work on my car. I have a 24-year-old Saab. And I do some electronics in my car. Well, I want to do some on electronics. So I'm looking in, 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 in the internet, on Google, whatever. I'm looking for a certain problem that I have with, with my electronics. So this was with my ECU. It's really complicated. And this makes me a smart guy, I think. I don't know. Whatever. But I figure out that I need to buy a multimeter. This is it. So on a form, I'm reading like some SAP specialists or some people are like just as crazy as I am. They use a multimeter. And I also read some sp specific things about that multimeter. So I enter the Amazon marketplace, type in multimeter. And uh, also with, uh, I, I, I forgot the certain graph, but it was about like, I, I want to read certain volts, whatever. I, I don't really recall what I did. But then I see options. And all of a sudden I see prices going from $12 to 80. Well, I see different colors, but I don't really care about the color. I'm just looking for a technical solution that helps me. But I need to determine what is going to help me. What are all the differences that I see? So I get in a certain point that I'm gathering information. I'm using the marketplace to understand what are the differences between $80, $20. And it's not just about price. It's about what do I get? I'm looking for something. And this is it. Now I'm speaking about this. Nobody knows what I'm looking for. Right now, you don't know. I even don't know. Because it's based on, on my, my, my interaction with the marketplace. Now, and this is what you have to simulate as a seller. You need to understand what is going on in this process and then learn from a focus group, let's say 100 people. Now, then you get valuable feedback. Right. I often talk about the psychology of buyers often having some kind of feature or benefit that they need to check off in their mind before they purchase. So in your case, you need to make sure that it can hand, handle what you, the job that you're trying to accomplish. If you don't see that on the listing page, you're not going to buy. But to the contrary, if you see it, you will probably buy it, right? And so this is true for almost every product on Amazon, that even people with searching for diaper bags, for example, a large percentage of them want to have a cooler pocket to hold, to keep the bottles insulated, an insulated pocket to keep the bottles warm or cold or whatever. A lot of them want to have a changing pad included. A lot of them want to have stroller straps, a lot of them. But if you do not convey some of these benefits in your main image, you won't get the click. If you don't convey some of them in your first bullet or your second image, or at all on your listing, you will not get the purchase or the sale and your conversion rate will be much lower. Ultimately, these small things that we overlook because we don't understand the psychology of the buyer will result in our product having a lower performance and ultimately potentially failing on Amazon because we didn't position it correctly. So what is your solution for that? And, and how, do, how do we avoid making those mistakes? Because oftentimes we're creating products because it's a widget that looks good from an SEO perspective. And we look at the market and we say, those guys are bad at Amazon. We can make a better looking product that is better. But we don't know what better is if we don't go deep into the product research, market research. That's it. When you are saying like, we can make a better product, I think our egos come into right. play. Right. It's about like we think based on what we see, let's do this or let's do that. Or maybe that conversation with the manufacturer is already enough because those guys are, are in, in making those products for over a decade. I don't know. But it's all blindness. It's not what a consumer is looking for. You need to understand. So I can't wait till Amazon gets to a point where we can create dynamic images that change based on search terms. Oh, that would be great.
I mean, think, think about it because dynamic bullets, dy dynamic listings based on how people came into your listing. I would, I, I know that that would increase conversion significantly. So if Amazon's listening, I'm a hundred percent for it because the same way on Google, like you can see dynamic search results on a regular basis and they do help. Um, I would love to be able to position my product differently based on the way you searched and found it or based on what you're looking for, especially my main image, because I want to solve the problem that I know you're looking for. And if it's general and you're looking for a comparison in the market or specific needs or wants, uh, buyer intent keywords, keywords with certain features uh, in them, I can put those front and center for you. Yeah. That, that's it. But I think what you're saying, by the way, with getting, getting images that that are just changing based on your need I, then i'm just trying to imagine like what would the marketplace look like then we do not need any more options then it's just one product and it's adapting to what you want and you have just one product that you can buy maybe this is the ai future i don't know <laughs> but uh, right now we we are dealing with many options and i think too many sellers are and this sounds very very negative maybe but too many sellers are just looking at the competition and just try to figure out themselves you know, let's change the color or let's do this or whatever. But it's about understanding certain wants, needs and desires. If you are in a situation with a multimeter, imagine you are, you are looking for a multimeter. Right. What would be important to you? And you ask a group of 50 people or 60 and then you get feedback. Well, I know you have that service where, you know, that's what Intellivy does. It has the service to ask the audience. What stage is that initial question? Is that the drab study? No, it's in all our poll types. No, no, to, to, to understand even how to position the product or so the initial, like I know a drab study would be like, would you even want this feature I'm about to build type of thing? Um, yeah, exactly. But then later positioning. So I'm just wondering, let's give someone, let's give the, the audience something actionable to exit the, the conversation here. Give, give people two tips, just two tips on the best practices for their image stack to make sure that they are doing the right thing to convey these thoughts in a clear way to maximize conversion. Best practices for image stack? Well, the second image is the image where you have to convince the buyer that this is the product that they need. So they have to be excited to click through the listing and go to the third image and the fourth. So the order of images I think that's tip number one, and maybe even more tip number one. That sounds weird. So now we're going to get free. You need to know what are the things that you need to tell on the second image to convince the buyer. And by doing so, you need to know where the click is coming right, from. Right, right, right. So you have to understand the there's a distribution of searches based on, on different features, benefits, or, or what these people want. So you really have to understand their demographic. Yeah, maybe we need to build that into data dive where we where we have AI analyze the search terms that we give you in the master keyword list so that we can we can have the AI tell us what are the features we should have as the second bullet or second image, right? We can do it, but we still need to test it. So I think again, if I'm generating a click, there's a reason for getting a click. It might be so we spoke about beach blankets recently and and everybody wants it sent proof so it, it has to easy the scent has to go off easily. Now, if I'm clicking on a, on a first image, on a first tile, because I'm convinced that this might be the beach blanket that I'm looking for, the second image has to convince me on that topic of sandproof. It's, it has to. And if it's, if it's showing me a bag and it comes with this and it comes with that, shit, I was looking for sandproof. Convince me that, that it's sandproof. That's what I'm looking for. And if it doesn't, you're already getting the attention level. It, it goes away. So people are going to another I listing and see if, I love if they- I love it. Absolutely. So, so to summarize, because I've seen this happen and you can confirm this, changing the order, you can have the benefits to your buyer as your images, but even changing the order of your images can impact conversion rate. 100%. Absolutely. Yeah. And so that if you, because people, people won't see all your images. If they start looking through your image check and you're not answering their question, they're going to bounce to the next guy right away. Absolutely. All right. That, that, that's it. Right. Yeah. You, you know, I can just share my screen. I, I just want to. Um, Go for it. Because I'm looking at the multimeter while I'm speaking about this. So I just, I just typed in multimeter. That's what I'm doing. And I see sponsored products. So somehow, well, this is bestseller, but let's, let's see. What do we have here? 
here, if if this guy or, or this one is is fourteen dollars and well, he he did make the decision to place it in the sponsored ad at this position on the keyword multimeter, and this is where you come into play, right? With data dive, multimeter is probably the biggest keyword, has the most traffic, most impressions, but is it is it a good idea to place your product in this position? If I'm just typing in multimeter, you have to know that, you have to know it. And I'm not going to click on it right now because I think that's not fair to the guy who's maybe watching this. But here it is not sponsored. Is that the same? It is. I think it is. But now I'm going to this listing and this is my second image. So, okay. So the AC voltage test is the most important thing that I want to know if I'm buying a multimeter. Is that true? Is that true? I don't know. I don't know. Going back to the first page, it didn't really tell me that. So if I just look at AC voltmeter, own volt test. So an own volt test is quite high in, in, in the title. Why is that? Is that so important, own volt test? Is that what we want to know? I don't know. So then it goes to, okay, cont continuity test. It's, it's in the title, I see, but I don't know. Like, is the, is, and then why, why is it in the car now? So now I go from from a, a, a wall socket in a house, and now I, I try to. I have to figure out. By the way, I see this that this is a car, but I don't think that everybody will see it. So now you're just breaking down a certain listing based on click, click, click. If if you even get to that point, so let's say that you will be getting paid for uh, the amount of time that people spend on your listing. I think everybody will be surprised that it's so short. And why is that? Because people are just scanning information looking for i'm looking for a solution i have a problem but if the seller doesn't know that and we do not have the luxury to speak or have a conversation in the store because that will be easier nowadays not anymore because we have a bunch of young people in the stores and they don't even understand how to ask a question so that's a different thing <laughs> but the old man and you is showing up here you're complaining about that younger it is, generation it is. <laughs> And I'm brave enough to say it. <laughs> Get off my lawn. <laughs> this is it. And we spoke about this rise. So Kids these days. That's what you got to say. That's the phrase like that. Our, our parents used to say it. Our grandparents used to say it. You know, kids these days, you know, like this is where you're going. And, I, and, and when I was younger, I didn't listen. So but now I have to say they were right. <laughs> No, but this is what we spoke about, Brandon. So you, you have, if, if I already had a multimeter and I have experience for three years with the thing, I already know, like, I'm an experienced user. I don't need anything about the information gathering process. Why should right. I? I already know what right. I want. Maybe I might even end up in eBay or whatever store. I'm not going to name any names, but this is crazy stuff with Timu. Oh, sorry. I did it. But nevertheless, but this is one way to buy on Amazon. The other way is, and this is much bigger, people are just using the platform to gather information. Super helpful uh, for, for not just for me, but for everyone watching, I'm sure, to have someone who lives and breathes in consumer behavior um, to, to come on and talk about it. We, we definitely need more parts of a series on this because this is where you win. This is where, and, and by when I mean uh, on Amazon with your listing making sales and you making profit and building up a profitable seven-figure, eight-figure business. And that's what we're trying to help people do. So I'm looking forward to having more conversations with you. I think that this was a good, uh, a good one. And uh, drop your questions below for Peter Paul. If you're interested in learning on how to run your own polls, to talk to audiences around what you're thinking about doing, or if you have a product on Amazon that you're struggling with, you're going to get that feedback and it's going to be the incremental improvements that you make that are going to result in the product being a winner versus where you're currently at or winning more if you're already winning. So reach out to Peter Paul if you need help. And uh, if you need any help on the classes side, if you're not already an Inner Circle member, Make sure you check out the Inner Circle. That's our college level course and mastermind. We have over a thousand sellers, over 400 doing over a million dollars, over 3 billion combined sales between our sellers. It's the place to be if you want to be successful on Amazon. But uh, we'll be putting out more content like this. Thank you for joining. Thank you uh, for joining me today, Peter Paul. Always a pleasure, my friend. Thank you for the valuable lesson today. <laughs>